everybody, it's Coach D here again. Uh, I am the founder of the Volley Academy. If you don't know who I am, I've coached college volleyball for the last 23 years. And uh, today I want to go over something that is a huge question mark. And what a lot of people have been asking is, Coach D, as a parent, what is my role in recruiting? So today I want to go over five do's and five don'ts and the parent's role in recruiting and the recruiting journey, uh, specifically for volleyball players. So uh, again, the recruiting journey is, is an unbelievable, awesome journey. It's the most fun that you'll have. It's the most fun that I, it's one of the favorite things for me as a coach is to go out and find people that want to be on my team. Um, in the same way, you are going to see a lot of uh, coaches come over and tell your daughter how great she is. Um, so I think that this is a great time and a great journey, uh, where she has that opportunity. Now she's going to be hearing some things. She's going to be experiencing no, a whole lot as well. I, I told you guys on our last, uh, Q and a session that, um, as a college coach, I probably would have around 150 to 200 players on my recruiting list, uh, that I had openly contacted through that recruiting cycle. And I would bring on five or six players. Um, and so there was a lot of me telling them no, but more than likely those players telling me no. I didn't coach at Nebraska. I never coached at, you know, Penn State. So most of the time what you'll see is you'll see a lot of players telling the coaches no. And uh, so we have to learn with rejection. And also your daughter needs to learn with rejection. And we'll kind of go over that a little bit later. But our first thing that I want to go over is I want to go over the five don'ts, uh, the five things that you should never do as a parent in the recruiting process for your daughter in volleyball. And I think that the very first thing that I want to talk about is do not be the first contact with a college coach as a parent. Your daughter needs to be the first contact. Now, I do understand sometimes those uh, recruiting coordinators can be a first contact, but you do not need to be the first representative from your family to contact that college coach. Don't walk up to a college coach and say, hey, I'm Susie's mom. Uh, she really wants to play for you. That doesn't need to, if Susie has not already talked to the college coach or talked to me as a college coach, I don't need to hear from you first. Honestly, I don't need to hear from you except for maybe one time when you're on the official visit. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But one thing that I want you to understand is, is that this is your daughter's decision. We're going to start and I'm going to say that and I'm going to say it a hundred times over. This is your daughter's decision. You can't pick where she goes to school. So she is the one making the decision. She is the one that needs to be making the communication as well. So as a parent, do not be the first contact. You don't need to send the emails out on your behalf. Um, we see the email, who it comes from, okay? So if I'm recruiting Elizabeth Rodriguez and I get an email from Janet Rodriguez's email address, but Elizabeth is typing in it, I, I, that's a weird connection. I want Elizabeth's email address to be on there, not Janet, okay? So I don't need mom's email address on that email as well. So as you contact me as a college coach, I need your daughter to do it, okay? That's the biggest thing. Dad, same thing. I know sometimes if you're, you're up to a male coach or even a female coach, you might wanna be that first guy. Oh man, that's my girl out there, number seven. She's awesome. They all look at her. That's not the way that it is. Let your daughter be that first contact with the college coach. And if we don't know it and we're coming by her, her court, we'll see her. We don't need you to come over and say, hey, that's my daughter over there. It does not look good for your daughter, and it doesn't help in the recruiting process. So please do not be the first contact from your family. Now, again, if you are, I'll give you one exception. If you're a recruiting coordinator over a lot of people, then yes, you can contact us. But if you're only the recruiting coordinator for your daughter, she still needs to do the job of contacting the college coach first. She needs to be the first contact. We'll talk about what you can do during that contact a little bit later. Okay. Number two, and this is my favorite. Do not act a fool. You know who you are. Okay. 
Don't sit there and yell at referees. Don't sit there and yell at line judges. Don't sit there and complain about the coach on the sidelines. I've been to too many recruiting visits and tournaments where I stand in the back and that's where all the moms and dads are there with their video cameras. And even when I'm watching your daughter's video, I can hear what you're saying on your daughter's video. Oh, they don't set my daughter enough. Oh, yeah, Susie never gets the ball. Oh, coach is so rude. Can you believe that he does this? Oh, that's a double. Come on, call the double. And I hear all these things about parents acting a fool. And that's the easiest way for me to cross your daughter off my list. I don't care how great she is. If she's been raised by a bunch of fools, then I don't want her. Do you want to be excited about your daughter playing? Yes, but be in common. Be a great teammate. If you're yelling at the coach in club volleyball, you're going to be yelling at me and your daughter's going to be yelling at me, and that is a no-go. And that's somebody that's going to be moved down the list or completely off the list. So make sure that you do not act a fool. People are watching. Several, several, several college coaches, myself included when I was college coach, would look at the parent. Sometimes I'd sit down with the recruiting coordinator and they'd say, yeah, she's playing really well. And I'd say, which ones are her parents? And uh, they'll say, I, I don't want to tell you. I played the fifth. Or there they are right there. And the parent is just sitting there just saying, oh, my goodness, yelling, move your feet. Come on, communicate. Come on, set the ball higher to her. You know, hit the ball in. Oh, you served it out again. You know, those different things. If you're sitting there acting a fool at a tournament, <laughs> I don't want somebody like you in my program. And who's somebody like you? Your flesh and blood. <laughs> so don't act a fool at a tournament. That's another big one. Okay. Number three, and this is a big one too. I've seen a lot of times, I call them cocktail decisions. A lot of times, uh, players will go to, and the, number three is don't tell your daughter where to go. Uh, a lot of times, a daughter will, will go to a place just so her mom and dad can say, my daughter went to Stanford, or my daughter went to Arkansas State, or uh, Arkansas State's awesome. Brian's great, by the way. Go to Arkansas State. But, you know, a lot of times, people want to just say, that's my daughter played Division One at the University of Florida at the University of Georgia, at whatever the biggest school is in your state. So the parents can sit there and say, yeah, my daughter's a Razorback. What about it? You know, and the daughter doesn't play. The daughter doesn't get an opportunity to show her skill. Now, again, might be able to do well in practices, but might not be able to play. So make sure that you're not telling your daughter where to go. Now, again, University of Florida, unbelievable school. Mary Wise is the best coach around. Jason Watson might be a little bit better than her because uh, I know Jason, he's a great guy. So Arkansas is great. Arkansas State is great. But don't go to a school. Just don't tell your daughter where to go to school. Don't be that. You can help her, but don't tell her, hey, you have got to go to this school. Why? Because I can tell my friends at our cocktail party that my daughter plays Division I volleyball, and she's miserable there. Because you made the decision instead of her. Let your daughter make her own decision. This is where she's going to thrive. She's going to be an adult. She's going to have to live it, not you. You are not able to play through her. Okay? Let your daughter make a decision where she feels great. Now, again, you do have, I would probably say, maybe one veto. I would go and tell your daughter, I got two vetoes. If you say, I really want to go to this school and I don't like that coach, I can say no. And then you'll have to go to your number two or something like that. But don't sit there and say, we're, we're not going there because you're not going there. Now, we'll talk about finances later. But when your daughter wants to go to a school, you need to be supportive. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But please don't tell your daughter where to go. Okay. Number four, there are two types of parents. We're going to go over. There's a billion types of parents. But we're going to go over two types of parents in number four and five. Number four, don't be a helicopter parent. Okay. Your daughter is going to experience rejection. More than likely, she has 25 schools unless she's six foot eight and pounding the ball straight down and can pass a 3-0 average. She's not going to be able to pick where she wants to go to school necessarily. So a lot of times your daughter will be experienced rejection. Let her experience that rejection. 
help her put your arm around her, but don't swoop up and say, that guy's stupid. Don't worry about them. Let's go find something different. You can do that. You can have a little ice cream date and do that. But make sure that you're not just swarming in and trying to pick her up. Help her to understand, you know, maybe why did I not be able to go to school? Am I not good enough? Um, is that school not part of me? A lot of times a, a player would come in cussing and, and doing all these other things. And that's fine for her, but it's not good for my program. Or the other way around, maybe a, a person is too religious and you have a coach that's an atheist and they don't want that around their program. And it's not necessarily bad be either one or the other, but it doesn't fit. So allow your daughter to have rejection. Allow her to go through that and to hear a coach say, you know what, I really like the way you play, but you just don't fit with us. And, and allow her to, to help that, to mold her, because she's going to have that as she goes through the job process, as she goes through dating life, as she goes through everything in her life, she's going to have to experience rejection. And this is a great time to do it. So don't be a helicopter mom and swoop in and take her up and take her away. Let her experience those things. And then the fifth thing don't be is another type of parent. Don't be a lawnmower parent. And a lawnmower parent basically means I don't need you mowing down people and mowing things and making it perfect for her. I don't want you to mow over and say, okay, where is the, where's the place where she's easily going to get in so she gets an easy yes? And then you go out in front and you mow that lawn so she has to walk on fresh green grass the whole time. It's, it's not reality. It's not the world we live in. Don't go out and try to mow down everything and don't make everything perfect for her. Let her experience things. Let her experience hardships, Okay. Let me do a little side note here. If you've been in five clubs the last five years, that's a lawnmower parent because the grass is always greener somewhere else. You don't want your daughter to sit on the bench. Now, I understand if there's a bad coach there. I understand. You want to move your daughter to another club. But if you've gone to 15 different clubs, if you are a, if you have a, uh, a lease at the transfer portal for four years because every year you're going into the transfer portal, that's a huge problem. And that's somebody that's a lawnmower parent that, or has experienced a lawnmower parent because they always feel like they have to go, their feet only touch naturally cut brand new green grass. The grass isn't always green, okay? The grass has stickers in it. The grass has different things you have to go through in your life in order to achieve that green grass. Now, there are going to be some green grasses out there, but don't mow all of them down. Let your daughter experience those things. Don't go before and don't keep on switching so that she has the perfect, perfect, perfect thing. I love when a player says, I'm not a big fan of my coach, but I respect him or her because they're my coach. And whatever they ask me to do, I'm going to do it. Because there's times you're not going to agree with your coach, but your coach is put in a position and you do get to choose your coach in recruiting. But you are. Not always, by the way. There's sometimes that ADs choose your coach for you. But when you go through those things, you have got to understand, you've got to understand what you don't want in order to find out what you do want. And if you as a parent are always mowing down the grass in front of them so that everything is perfect for them, allow them to experience, this is just like number four, allow them to experience some type of, of problems. Make sure that they're having to go through something because if they don't go through it now, they're going to go through it later and they're going to be so entitled that they're going to have a wrong response to it later. Have a, a Petri dish of rejection. Talk about it. Go over it and then learn from it to move forward. So don't be the first contact. Don't act a fool. Don't tell your daughter where to go. Don't be a helicopter parent. Let her experience some rejection. And number five, don't be a lawnmower parent. Don't sit there and try to make everything perfect for her. Let her experience a tough situation now because it's going to grow her later. It says, and I don't know if you're a Bible believer, but it says in James, blessed be the person that goes through trials of many kinds because it's in, it produces endurance and perseverance. So I'd really like for you guys to allow your daughter to experience those things because it's going to make her better as she enters into the school that is her dream school, okay? All right, Coach D, I thought you were the find the good guy. I thought you were the positive. Positivity always wins, and you're sitting here and telling me, don't, 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 don't. 
Understood. I got to tell you what not to do first, because you, a lot of you are doing those things already. And then now I'm going to allow you and say, okay, these are the things I want you to take with you. These are the things that you do want to do. These are the attributes of a great parent. Now, I'm not a parent. I don't have a daughter. But in my experience over the last 20 plus years of recruiting, this is what helps out players the most as they enter into college. Parents that do this with their daughters, first off, starting with, all the way through move-in day, this is what you do need to do to help your daughter succeed at the highest level and find her dream school that she fits like nobody's business, okay? The first thing that you need to do is you need to discuss finances with your daughter. Now, you don't need to tell her how much you make. You don't need to say, okay, we can afford X amount of dollars, but you need to give her a ballpark because if she's looking Ivy League and you're on a junior college budget, there's going to be a very, very rough part in between. So I believe before her June 15th of her, right after her sophomore year, I think you guys need to sit down and talk about it. I would even say in April 1st of her sophomore year, sit down and chat with her. Ask her if she wants to go to college. Ask her if she wants to play volleyball in college because why are we spending all this money on club? Club is a great experience too, by the way. But ask her if she wants to go to college. And then when she says, yes, I want to play volleyball in college, say, Honey, if you want to go play volleyball in college, you're going to have to get a full ride. That is okay. There are a lot of places out there, especially as a lot of junior colleges that are great opportunities to get a full ride in junior college for two years. And then that junior college coach can get her recruited at the division one, division two level and NAI level. She can get a full ride as well. Now, if you have saved up money for college for your daughter, you're in baby step, I think, what is it? Five, four? And Dave Ramsey's baby steps, I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. And you've actually saved some money for college. Talk to her about that. Say, you know what? We do have a little bit of money saved. We don't have $20,000 a year, but we have 12. And she doesn't need to know how much money you make, but you need to discuss the finances of what you can afford. If you watched my last Q&A, the five questions you have to ask is, can I get a job with this degree? Can I live in this town? Can I play with these players? Can I play for this coach? Can I afford it? And if your daughter is looking at schools that are way up here in price and you can't afford it, I don't need her to take out $200,000 worth of student loans before she starts school. Before she starts her life, she's going to start with two weights on her ankles and an albatross around her neck. So you've got to discuss finances a little bit with her about where you guys are as a family and maybe you say, hey, I can afford $5,000 a year for you to go to school, but your uncle owns a restaurant. You can go sweep the floors and clean the bathrooms, and you can get an extra two or $3,000 a year, or even while you're playing and during your high school years, you can go do it, and you can get $10,000 a year delivering for DoorDash, not as a 16-year-old, but you can get an extra amount of money, and you could put money toward, if you really want to go to the school, we're going to contribute this around this area, if you're looking at schools above that, you need to make sure that you're putting in some time and effort too. And you need to have that discussion before the recruiting process starts after her sophomore season. I think that's the number one thing to do is to have a sit down conversation with your daughter and talk about finances and even talk about the differences between a full scholarship and a academic scholarship only. Because then it would be a great time for them to really focus on their academic and getting those academic scholarships up. And a lot of schools offer full academic scholarships, even at the Division three level. So those are things that I think you need to do first is have that financial discussion with your daughter when she's mature enough to talk about it. And you guys can decide, hey, this is what we can contribute. This is what you will need to contribute in order to get there. And I would really encourage her to work, 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 and put that money toward her college education. And even while she's in college, whoa, this is a crazy thought, even while she's in college, to work a little bit to help fund her college education. 
the best thing in life for her is to get out of college debt free. And as close as we can get to that is what we want to do. So have a discussion with her about what is and what isn't in terms of your college budget. Number two, encourage and motiv motivate her. You have got to be on her. You've got to say, have you emailed your coaches? Have you, have you updated your uh, university athlete? Have you uh, looked at camps? Have you called the coaches? Have you talked to your recruiting coordinator? Have you got your video done? Have you updated your video? Have you updated your stats? Have you, hey, let's go, let's get on it. You have got to encourage her and motivate her to do things. She's 15, 16 years old, 17 years old. All she wants to do is sit there and scan through TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram. You've got to get in there and you've got to be that motivator as well. And to be honest with you, if she's sitting in there doing that and she needs motivation to go to college, not a lot of college coaches are going to want her. So you've got to get into her that work ethic of doing the work and putting forth a great effort in order to get on college coaches' radars. And again, you don't do it. Do not send an email for your daughter. All right? Let her do it. Now, you might need to uh, do the highlight reel for her or hire somebody to do that. She can't probably do film editing right now as a 15 year old but you need to make her or help her motivate her to do the things on her own okay so number two is make sure that you are an encourager and a motivator but make sure you understand it's her decisions she has got to make that decision do not jump in there even don't go on her email account and send out emails for her that is entitled and she is not going to thrive at any school she goes to she's going to be a pain in my butt <laughs> As a coach, college coach, and she's not going to get a whole lot of offers because we're going to find that out. That mom is pulling the strings and daughter is just a lazy butt. She needs to go. Number three, go on all the visits before commitment. If she goes on a college visit and she's serious about a school, you need to be there. Every official and unofficial visit my players, the players that come in, will go to a class with one of our players. During that time when the player is in class with one of my players, I sit down with the parents and I first take about 15 minutes with my assistant coach to be able to sit with the parents so that the parents can ask my assistant coach about me. And again, my rule is be 100% honest about everything. If my assistant coach doesn't like something about me, don't volunteer it. But if they ask, be 100% honest. And then I come back in for the next about 40 minutes and they ask me questions about school life, about boys, about drugs, about travel, about my coaching style, about this, that, and the other, about uniforms, about everything. That's a great time for you to talk to the college coach. You're like, Coach D, I'm not supposed to initiate contact with the college coach. Awesome. But when you're on campus during your official visit is a great time for you to get a good idea before she makes her a commitment of who this coach is and what this school is all about. Yeah, again, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but during the official visit, you need to be there. You can't have her telling you because she's gonna tell you what she wants you to hear about that school. And you are a mother and a father with great intuition. You know when you sit down with somebody, if they're genuine or if they're full of crap. So if you sit down with somebody, you can figure out and you can use your veto and say, we ain't going there. First off, the school is too dirty or the school doesn't have this major or everybody walks around there and all they do is da, 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 da. If you're not there, you're not able to do it. So find a day, find an official visit day where you can go, one of you, either you or your husband or wife, somebody from an adult from the family goes with your daughter on that official visit. I think that is a must for every student athlete. I really don't like to offer somebody or I don't like to take their commitment if they come by themselves on a official visit. Now I take that back if it's a transfer that already knows things. If she's already an adult, she's a 19 or 20 year old, I understand she has the decision making power. But as a 16 and 17 year old, if she's coming to visit campus, I want that parent to be there too to talk to the coaches, to see the, the practice or see the communication or the way that the coach treats their players. 
All those things can't be heard over her phone. All those things can't be heard third hand from your daughter because she's going to tell you what she wants you to hear. You need to be there on those official visits. So do go on the official and unofficial visits before commitment. After she commits and after you give your blessing and say we can afford it and all those other things, she can drive up there on a weekend and hang out. That's okay. You don't need to be there. But until she makes her commitment the first time, at least once, I think you need to see the school, talk to the coach eye to eye, and all those other things before. So that is a do. Do go on official visits. Number four, research the coach and research the school. As college coaches, we look at social media, okay? We will find the social media of your daughter and we'll find a way to find it and we'll research who she is and what she puts on social media. She's saying F this, F that, whatever, all these different letters that mean the same thing. Probably not going to be able to, not going to recruit her. It's the same way with you. You need to find out about that coach. If that coach is sitting there and smoking weed in his social media or her social media, if that coach is sitting there and cussing the whole time on their social media, if that coach is sitting there and, you know, doing things that you don't approve of, or you get to know the coach by their social media as well. So research the coach. Not necessarily is it guaranteed that that coach is going to be there when your daughter graduates. But you need to have that feeling as well. So do your research like we do our research on your daughter. you got to do your research on us. And I say that all the coaches are going to say, uh-oh. But yeah, coaches, clean up your, your stuff too. Clean up your social media. Okay? And then do your research on the school as well. Talk, take a look at their graduation rates. Take a look at their average income of graduates over the first two years. You can find all of those things. Take a look at the security. Every school should have on their webpage, a, a listing and statistics of security on campus. How, how many uh, robberies have there been? What are the types of, of things that have happened on campus? It's a requirement by the state that they have to show that and have to be honest with that. Do your research on the school. Grade point average, entry requirements, all those things. You can do that. That's something you can do. Take it off your daughter's plate. And you can tell her all the statistics so she doesn't have to research it herself. Those are things you can do without talking to the coach. All right. Now, let me go back to talking to the coach. Now, your daughter is 15 or 16 year old. I'm a 46 year old male. OK, I don't encourage you to allow a 15 or 16 year old talk to a 46 year old male at 10 o'clock at night uh, without you being there. So what I would really encourage you to do for, through the first maybe two or three connections. Now, again, you might not feel that way. The daughter might not feel that way. The coach might not feel great, but put it on speakerphone and be in the same room. If not on speakerphone, be in the same room as your daughter during her first connections with college coaches, because that is a great way for you to understand who the coach is as well. And what is he or she saying to your daughter? Don't talk. Just be an ear. Put duct tape over your mouth. Don't say anything unless you've been asked. The daughter can say, hey, you're on speakerphone with me and my mom. And then the coach will probably say, hey, mom, do you have any questions? Take the duct tape off, and that's the time you talk. But don't start the conversation and don't jump in unless asked to contribute. Because if you overwhelm the conversation, the coach is going to take her off the list and say she's entitled. Okay? So do be there when your daughter is on the phone with a college coach the first two or three times or until you feel comfortable with that coach. Because, again, they're going to be a big part of your daughter's life. And whether it's a woman or a man, you need to make sure that you protect your daughter from somebody that is going to harm them verbally as well. But just make sure that you are you can be a part of that first conversation by being on the phone. Now, again, 99.99999% of college coaches are awesome, okay? But there are some jerks. And you got to make sure that you focus in on being there when your daughter is talking to the coach until you feel comfortable with that coach and you've done your research like we talked about in number four. And then number five, last one, do, 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 do support her decision. I saw a video of a, a mom that was, now again, this 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 football player uh, was on ESPN making their decision to go to, a, to their college. And the mom sitting there, and she was a huge Alabama fan. And the player chose the right school, my Florida Gators, as you can see right here with Tim Tebow. But, 
And the mom walked off the set and she was so frustrated. And she just said, I'm not even going to be up here if you're going to choose that school. Support your daughter in her decision. This is her decision. She's done the research. She's done everything. You've had your veto. You talked about finances. You encouraged her and motivated her. You met the coach. You asked the questions that you needed to ask. You're comfortable with the school and you got to give her a list of schools that you're comfortable with as well. But when she makes that decision, it might not be your top decision, but it's her top decision. Support her when she makes that decision. Support her and say, okay, it fits in our realm of, of finances. It fits in distance away. It fits in, you know, size of school. It fits in our ideology if we are a religious school or a non-religious school. It fits in all of those things. It checks all the boxes. Now, she's going to have five or ten schools that checks all the boxes. You might want uh, number seven, and she picks number two. Support her decision. It's going to mean the world to her that you say, I'm so excited to be a badger or a gator or a bulldog or whatever it may be and go buy the shirts and sit next to her during the signing ceremony give her a hug and say we're so proud of you because that's going to mean so much to her coming from her mom or dad saying that they support her and her making her biggest decision of her life so far of where she's going to go to college because where she's going to go to college is probably going to be the place that she finds her significant other, who she's going to marry. And then that's going to, again, dictate what kind of job she has, what kind of character she has, and all those things. And you have done so much work building into her for her to make this decision. When she makes the decision, support her in that decision. Thank you for listening. I'll go over the don'ts again. Don't be the first contact with the college coach, but do be on the phone when they're on the phone with that first contact. Uh, you can, you know, put yourself on mute. Don't say anything unless asked of, but make sure that you're there as well. Two, don't act a fool. All right. Calm down. It's a game. It's a sport. I know you're excited, but always stay positive. Positivity always wins. Three, don't tell your daughter where to go. Let her make her decision. Four, don't be a helicopter parent. Allow her to experience some turbulence. Five, don't be a lawnmower. Don't mow the grass before she gets on it, okay? She's got to be able to do that. She has to understand where those stickers are and where to stay away from. And that'll help her find her dream school. The things you do need to do, sit down now. If she's, if it's, if she's a sophomore or higher, sit down now and talk to her about finances, what you guys can't afford as a family going to school. You don't have to tell her your income. Tell her what you can't afford. You can tell her, hey, we make a million dollars. You don't have to say that, but... You can go wherever you want. If you have $100,000 a year to put toward college, go with that route. But don't put her in a place where she's going to be in huge debt later or you guys are going to have to struggle to pay for college. I want it to be a blessing to both of you. You can tell her, hey, you have to get a full scholarship. And that's going to greatly reduce her opportunities and her places. So start saving now and help her to start working now to get there. Encourage and motivate her. Okay? She's a teenage girl. She needs some encouragement. She needs some motivation. Kick her in the butt a little bit. Get her going and tell her what she does now will be exponentially rewarded in the future with scholarships and with opportunities to play this great sport. Go on all the official and unofficial visits before she commits. Go at least on one. I'm sorry. I probably should have said just go on one. But yes, go on the official visit before she commits. You need to have an opportunity of seeing the campus and seeing the coach. I would really if you're a two-parent household for both of you, even if you're a separated household and dad's over here and mom's over here, I would really encourage for mom to go on this visit and dad to go on this visit or dad to go some other time. You both have to have an agreement if you're both paying for college because it has to be something that's a blessing and not a curse. Go on those visits, talk to the players, talk to the coaches, talk to the other parents and make sure that you have a, a blessing as well and you have a good feeling. But again, it's her decision. Number four, research the coach in school. Find their uh, social media. And honestly, just ask them. Add them as a friend. All right? Follow them on Instagram. If they don't add you and they don't follow you, there's a problem. Okay? But research them in that way. And then lastly, the biggest one, I think, is the support of decision. It's her decision. She's sat here. You've helped her. You've motivated her. You talked about finances. You guys, this is going to be a blessing for her. 
okay? Don't tell her where to go. Let her choose where she wants to go. And then when she chooses it, even if you, let's say, for instance, you're a huge Florida Gator fan and she chooses Florida State, or you're a huge Auburn fan and she chooses Auburn, or you're a huge Razorback fan and she chooses Texas A&M or Texas or Oklahoma, support her and love her and wear the shirt. You can take it off right after the signing ceremony, but support her in her decision. This is where she's going to make a life. You have worked so hard. You've put 17 years into this. This is her time and her time to be an adult. As she jumps into adulthood, this is her decision to make to help her in her life. Have a piece about it. Have her have a piece about it. And it's going to be a blessing. John Maxwell says there's no place like this place anywhere near this place. So this must be the place. You're going to find that place in recruiting. And I'm going to be excited when you do. If you guys need any help on recruiting, I do offer personal coaching um, with parents as well. Okay, I have a I have a coaching sessions that I have with parents where you're asking, oh, I just want to just what do I do? So I have those opportunities as well. Same thing with players. If you guys just want to talk to somebody, I'm not going to call college coaches. I'm not going to do your video for you, but I'll help answer questions every Tuesday night uh, this week, which is. Father's Day weekend, right? The Tuesday night after Father's Day weekend, we're going to be on our last time of Facebook. Every other Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be on uh, YouTube live stream. And we're going to live stream a Q&A session. So you can come in on Tuesday night, type in your question or email me a question, and I'll answer it on the next Tuesday night. Um, if you're not on our Facebook page, please go over to Facebook. Uh, TVA add value, I think is what it is, but just type in the Volley Academy, it'll come up. Um, but I'm done. I think we've gone for 30, 35, 30, 36 minutes. That's a long time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. I wish you the best in recruiting. If you need help, email me. My email is thevolleyacademy at gmail.com. My name is Justin D. I hope that I've added value to you today in this session, and I hope to see you next time. God bless. We'll catch you next time.